was something that you've lost recently? Was it something important to you? Hi, my name is Aya McCullum, and in this podcast, Tales of the Stardust, I will be telling you stories from antiquity and world mythology, but in a different light and different perspective, with lessons that you can incorporate in your everyday life, because these stories have been told from generations to generations. So come and join me as we dive deep down in today's story. I would just like to take a moment and thank Anchor for sponsoring this episode today. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast and have your story that you have been so desperate to tell. It's free, and they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so that it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listeners, and it's everything that you need all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And now, back to the story. It was a nice and summer day in Greece. Persephone, Demeter, the goddess of the harvest's daughter, was playing in the fields with some nymphs because Demeter did not wish for her daughter to be alone. At one point in the day, all the nymphs decided to take a nap while bathing in the sun. Persephone, wanting to be a little curious and wanting to have solitude, wandered into the forest. She picked flowers, talked to the trees, until suddenly there was a rumble in the ground. Then, from out of nowhere, Hades, god of the underworld, comes out of the ground and takes Persephone and leads her back into the depths of the underworld. Later that day, Demeter looks for her daughter, and from those nymphs she cannot be found. She searches far and wide in Greece, and some gods help her, but otherwise Demeter comes back to Mount Olympus alone and disheartened that her daughter is missing. For fear that the king of the gods, Zeus, was not going to help her, she cursed all the plants and all the crops to die and wither away. This gave Zeus's attention, and Zeus finally confessed that he betrothed Hades and Persephone into marriage. They then go all down to the underworld, to where Persephone is now the queen of the underworld, ruling beside her new husband, Hades. Demeter tries to embrace her daughter, that she is now going to come home, and all this will be as it was before. However, Hades tricked Persephone into eating six pomegranate seeds. Therefore, she can only stay above the ground for six months out of the year and spend the rest of the other six months in the underworld. Demeter used this fair settlement However, as time went on, every year that Persephone would have to say her goodbyes to Demeter. Demeter would have her heart filled with grief and loss that she would again curse those crops and plants to die in the coming winter months. I personally love this story, and it was one of the first stories that I ever read in this Greek mythology book that I had as a kid. And one of the main differences in that book that I saw was going through it and seeing the difference between how Demeter saw her daughter and how Persephone was viewed in Hades' eyes. Because there was this one page where it was all the Twelve Olympians, and there on Demeter's lap was a little Persephone a daughter and mother just staring and smiling at each other. But then if I turned a couple of pages, I would see the picture of Hades and Persephone, 
But Persephone was this queen and this woman. So when we think about the abduction of Persephone, we usually think of Persephone and Hades. But that's not what I really want to focus on today. I want to focus through Demeter's eyes and what Demeter was seeing. Because not only is a story about how winter became, but it's a story about letting go. From the start of the myth, we already see that Demeter is already a little overprotective of her daughter, as she always sends nymphs to be with Persephone at all times. However, when Persephone needs solitude, she goes off on her own. This is a story about letting go. And we see this through Demeter's eyes as she tries desperately in all her power to find her daughter and all her power to make her statement that her daughter is missing and that she wants her back. Now, we all know in Greek mythology that the gods act on impulse and emotion, probably as full throttle as they can. And yes, Demeter causes winter through her will, but it wasn't just through her will. It was through grief and through her loss that she felt that she had all the crops die beneath her feet because she lost her daughter. And the fact that she had to face that her daughter would not be with her for six months broke her heart every year to the point where she just had winter go off every year. But the story ends on a very hopeful note because Persephone eventually does come back to Demeter every spring and Demeter opens her arms and embraces her and that's when all the grass grows and the trees start to sprout and just new beginnings and a rebirth. A story that is told through a mother's eyes of a mother losing a child. And it doesn't have to be through kidnapping per se, but it could be through having a child going through college. I remember when I finally left home, when I had all my bags packed, and when me and my mom were driving to the dormitories across the country, actually. We were all getting ready until it was time to say goodbye. A final goodbye. But it was already predetermined that I was coming back for the winter holiday. But I saw this in my mom, and I also saw this in many of the moms and dads in the dormitories, where they gave that final last breath, holding back in the tears. They're proud for their kids, obviously, but there's still that fear that they're going into the underworld. Even though college is not the underworld, it's still a scary situation. And Demeter can't guide her daughter through the underworld. But at the same time, she feels those crops dying beneath her feet as her daughter descends into the darkness. But there's a hopeful note. Spring always comes again. And if you love something very much, they'll always come back to you. That is why Persephone returns every year so that she can have that one hug with her mother. Because it doesn't matter if Persephone's a queen. In Demeter's eyes, she's still that little girl in that picture of the Olympians that I had in that book as a girl. Parents always see their children as their children. But when it comes to that time of letting go, they will always come back to you. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of the Stardust. And thank you so much for Anchor for sponsoring this episode. If you'd like to see more content like this, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am McCullum. And as always, let the stars be your guide.